shop frontage scheme really came about uh, when we learned we were actually taking these premises initially two years ago. Uh, and what it's enabled us to do is create a larger floor area within our shop, but it's also then um, added a real sort of research to the area. What it's allowed us to do is use um, kind of the foundation we've created here and given us the confidence to take on our next shot, which is next door but one, which also falls within the cathedral quarter. And because the area has been um, kind of reinvented, if you like, with these shop fronts, it, we've just got a greater customer awareness. Uh, Derby City Council chose the building as, uh, or uh, approached me on the basis that we're in the cathedral quarter, very close to uh, the cathedral itself, and that uh, the, the shop front was detracting from, uh, from the area. On the back of their grants, which I gather are supported from uh, English Heritage, they persuaded me to, to, to apply. Without the grant assistance, I definitely wouldn't have done it. It is imperative in order to attract more, um, more customers, more clients, more, more visitors to the city centre. The city centre is improved. And in this particular case, we had a, an original surround, granite surround, still in existence, half hidden behind a 1970 fascia. And we had an amazing 1930s photograph of what the shop front used to be like when this was the site of the electricity board. For the last two winters we've had particularly severe winters and for both of those winters it's meant that we've actually had to reduce our salting routes at times. This year having a new salt barn built it will mean that we can um, increase our storage capacity from 2,000 tonnes up to 5,000 tonnes which should be enough to get us through the severest of winters. In addition to that we can purchase all our salt during the summer months when it's cheaper to buy. One of the problems that severe winters bring is an increase in potholes to the city's roads. This year we got a half million pound grant from, from the Department for Transport to cover this excessive damage. Um, I was driving down Aspfield Avenue one day last winter um, and just as you come over the brow of this hill um, I just felt my car um, kind of give a bit of a lurch and, and clearly there was a pothole there. So I rang the council and um, told them about the problem in the hope that they could fix it. In partnership with Carillion, we've been looking at some new technology for repairing individual potholes. It means we can repair a pothole first time round instead of doing one visit for a temporary repair and then a follow-up visit for a permanent repair. If someone reports a bad hole and it's, it is bad, I'll get a, a call on, on the iPhone, which, which my work is loaded on to. I'll suspend this job and go over and, and do the pothole repair immediately. And then when I've repaired that pothole, I will come back and finish this job off. I knew the council would have loads of potholes to cope with because uh, it had been such a bad winter. So I was quite surprised when this pothole near me was done just within a couple of days. So I felt I had to bring the council and say thank you. Following these two projects, um, all Street Pride services are now getting a great deal of very positive feedback from our customers. So the way it used to work when we used to assess people for um, minor adapts or smaller items of equipment was that the, uh, when the call came in to the front door of adult social services, they'd carry out an initial assessment and that would then, if they met the criteria, go through to an area team where that service user could sit in a queue waiting to be allocated for anything up to four weeks. Basically, we wanted to be more efficient. We wanted to try and get as much of the assessment done as possible at the front door. So making people safe in their homes earlier on was making people more independent, but also keeping them out of the mainstream service as well. And I think the maximum that it takes now is two weeks from beginning to end. an issue of um, antisocial behaviour around skating, damage to street furniture, things like that, fear of crime and, and a whole range of different things. 
So there was an obvious need for a local skate park, a significant skate park in the city centre. It's been very much a partnership project. They've brought lots of young people together, which have helped us actually do the design work. I came here with a couple of other colleagues and we started looking at trying to basically help the council develop and just create a relationship and develop the park. We've got quite a lot of knowledge of how skate parks work and how, how, they, should, how they should be put together. It's not always a case of just being able to put a ramp in a certain place in them. We had over 100 people come and spend the whole kind of day, the whole session with us and actually give lots of different ideas of what they wanted to see on this skate park. It's really popular. I mean, most nights, I'm, I'm guessing like most nights or days, you're getting at least 20 or 30 people down here. And on weekends, you get anywhere up to 60 people down here a day. It's, it's crazy. And the local, the local skaters and BMXers are using it all the time. Like I said, they're down here every night and they're loving it. We first um, heard about the grand schemes in a, a local pub publication. Um, at the time, our boilers, you know, weren't even working. I don't think at the time. Well, we had two very old boilers we've had for 25 years in the building. Um, very thirsty, uh, very hard to maintain. Um, we replaced that with uh, one very small boiler, um, very economical, um, fantastic. Uh, all in all, we, we had more than a hundred businesses applying, and uh, we, we had to shortlist. And some of them we, you know, throw away uh, at the start. Some of them weren't eligible because we're trying to target small, you know, very small businesses. So what normally tends to happen with uh, issues of emissions reduction is, I mean, it's something that people don't really, you know, understand and they can't really picture. So the amount of uh, carbon dioxide we saved is equivalent to, say, boiling a kettle six million times. Um, speed indicating devices have been introduced in a number of parts of the city and that's really been in response to residents coming to forums across the area saying speeding traffic is a real big problem for us. Well I've been raising uh, road safety as an issue for a long time, long before the SIGs came on the scene. The, the real problem is the speeding and especially when the children are coming home from school or going to school as well. They're really there as we say to try and uh, change drivers behaviour. So you'll see them installed initially um, showing the speeds where people be travelling at. So we'll cover the devices so that to see whether people will change their behaviour once it's not operating. And then we'll uncover them again to see whether that behaviour has changed again. Uh, as the managing director of an insurance broker, I see on a daily basis the damage caused by uh, people uh, speeding excessively, um, both in money terms and in uh, personal injury, and in some cases, sadly, loss of life terms. Uh, anything that can help reduce speeding um, and save lives and save money is okay by me.